We have this famous uh, basilica, the Basilica di San Vitale in Ravenna. Um, and this, you know, I mentioned Justinian, who is famous for having retaken uh, Ravenna for the what was the rem remnant of the Roman Empire, that is for the for the Eastern Empire, um, which remember seat of the Eastern Orthodox Church, right? One of the great, uh, you know, sources of, uh, despite being the Eastern Empire, one of the great sources of sort of Western uh, production and wisdom, um, and and now has taken back over Ravenna, uh, and in this basilica. Justinian and his empress, Theodora, um, are sort of depicted uh, in this Byzantine style uh, as, in what may be called sort of the height of it, you know, and this sort of, to Vasari's point, right, it's like if if they could have made anything different, if they, you know, if, if this is, represents at least the best that they uh, thought they could do, right, the best that they wanted to do, they, they were pouring resources and effort into this, uh, and, and we get some really amazing works. I mean, this is something that, like, uh, this is a, a place where you know, I will diverge from Vasari and say, you know, there is something, uh, there's something that about this that is not just decline. It's also expressing um, a certain vision, a certain kind of post-Roman vision of the world in which the glory of Rome and of uh, the kind of Roman monuments is being assumed up into heaven. Um, and and it's, it's very directly connected to this sort of complex and difficult transition that Christianity is making into a political power, right? Um, which will be the story, really, of the Middle Ages and of the birth of Europe and of, you know, the, the Carolingian Empire, uh, Charlemagne, Charles the Great, and, you know, th that whole kind of period when political power is consolidating in those warlords who are able to exert order upon the chaotic tribes of Europe, while spiritual power is really concentrating in in the Christian theological story. And that is because, of course, the Christianity is true. Uh, I will say that as a partisan of it. Uh, but but more forcefully, right, that this vision of the world, the Pauline vision of the world, which says, you know, polytheism is mistaken. Uh, the Greek gods are demons and idols. And uh, you are, you need to sort of uh, you know, erase these uh, mistaken stories from the world and and consummate them, baptize them in the true revelation of Jesus Christ, right? Um, who is the one God uh, forever and ever, amen, right? And, and this vision, right, for which people are dying over the course of the first three centuries AD under the persecutions of the Roman Empire, right, um, is starting to take hold over the kind of splintered vision of Greek philosophy that has, again, played itself out a little bit. And Christianity is coming in this great vigor and a tremendous power to capture hearts and minds, including hearts and minds like that of Constantine. Um, and, and so the conversion of the Roman Empire um, is a kind of seismic shift in where people think uh, glory and beauty resides. And so you can see whatever you want to, whatever else you want to say about the loss of certain techniques uh, and abilities, right? You can see the uh, mosaics of the Basilica San Vitale and other sort of uh, Byzantine mosaics and, and sort of Greek style, Maniera Greca imagery. Uh, we've got one up on the YouTube now if you want to look at it, right? You see Christ enthroned upon the world. Um, and you can see they're, they're in kind of Roman garb, uh, the angels, you know, and, and there are, of course, uh, you know, earthly figures flanking them. Um, but but Christ's kind of ascendancy up against this gold background, which is the famous mark, really, of this period uh, and will endure into the early paintings of the Renaissance, right? Uh, that gold background is, is conveying something. It's saying the power that really matters is not the power of this world. And insofar as the powers of this world are ever going to be just again, um, they must sort of take as their model something that is beyond the flesh. Um, and, and this is like not to be sniffed at. It's an actual, you know, artistic statement that people are making, even if, right, the techniques that they have to do it do, I have to say, look somewhat more rudimentary. So that's my disclaimer not to discount the Maniera Greca. And in fact, there's a great little note um, that I wanted to read from El Greco, uh, who is a, a much later painter. Um, and who did kind of uh, a lot of experimental stuff that diverged from some of the more kind of uh, photorealist, we might now say, or naturalist uh, depictions of the Renaissance, right? El Greco, 
um, was was uh, apparently fond of the Byzantine style, or at least he left behind this note uh, in which he says, you know, if Vasari knew the nature of the Greek style of which he speaks, he would deal with it differently in what he says. He compares it with Giotto, but what Giotto did is simple in comparison because the Greek style is full of ingenious difficulties. Um, and I like that because, you know, some of El Greco's work does uh, kind of elongate figures and, and create these ethereal backgrounds and foregrounds um, that you can see also in the best of these mosaics. Um, and the Justinian and Theodora mosaics, are, I think, are, are a great example. And even some of the stuff that uh, Cimabue does, as we're, we're going to get to him, uh, is sort of reflecting the best of that of that work. But uh, it is of limited scope and ability, right? It is of limited power to show uh, the, the full reality of nature. It's got certain uh, technical constraints. Um, and so whereas it is communicating something, and that is, I think, the kind of assumption of Christianity uh, to the highest place of moral and political authority, right? Um, and, and the development of a, a Rome that is beyond this world, right? The kind of casting down of the Caesars, who were supposed to be the great leaders of, of peace for all time, and the raising up of Christ, right? Who has conquered the Roman Empire, which ultimately was did preside over his death, Right. And so now he's basically come back uh, victorious over the world in the person of the of Constantine, but uh, and Justinian, but also, you know, just in this seismic transition from Christianity as persecuted faith to Christianity as dominant governing theory of life, the universe and everything. 